background to feminist theology and, and how it's evolved and how it continues to evolve. Because uh, this combined methodological practice has and still does put women voice, women voice to speak and act in justice seeking ways out of their experience, both individually and collectively. Secondly, I, I will explore the intermingling of art at the feminist theology that opened up another space for language to emerge that will help subvert the patriarchal boundaries that have contained and subdued women both historically and globally. This is the main aim and objective of feminist theologies and art, the feminist theologies and art forum, to create theologies and art that would help bring equality to the diverse experience of being woman. Simone de Beauvoir said, one is not born, but rather becomes a woman. Feminist liberation theologies are based on the liberation cycle of action, reflection, and action. This methodology is made up of multiple strands of diverse experiential knowledge of women and other marginalized contributors globally. Feminist theology in its singular form was born out of the marginalised contributors but sorry, <laughs> reading it again. Feminist theology in its singular form was born out of the revolutionary 60s where the second wave of feminism became a platform for the furthering the political fight to give women voice against patriarchal structures that dominated them. This was also a revolutionary time for other political activists who would rise and create movements that would fight for justice and equality for the marginalised in society. One example is the civil rights movement and black theology. And at the same time, we saw women of the Christian faith within the church begin to question more fully their subjugated position under patriarchy. And the struggle is not over yet. Women began to rise again as a liberating force to free themselves from the constraints of traditional theology and the doctrine of the Christian church, where this patriarch patriarchal force sat comfortably, assured of their power. Feminist theologies grew out of liberation theology, which also entered the arena in the 60s from Latin America. Gustave Gutierrez's theology of liberation was to give power back to the poor and, and the voice back to the voiceless. The voices in this case were the poor in Latin America. This active theology was to be a major contribution to feminist theologies of liberation because it uncovered for women the multiple marginalized layered lives that women globally lived, depending on what socio-cultural influences, color, sexual orientation, and class they were from. These different levels produced different political stances because they were personal to whatever situation they represented and were part of in the fight against the dualism, dualism of patriarchy. The feminist understanding of the person <coughs> being political became being political, political became important to those who were marginalised. Other feminist groups like the Goddess Movement, theologians, so that's T-H-E-A as opposed to T-H-E-O, were emerging, taking women out of the mainstream religion to reclaim an egalitarian way of life that was suggested to have existed during prehistoric times. Feminist theologian Christ Carol Chris brings back critical change. Carol Chris reminds us that the relationship of these two terms does not mean the personal automatically brings back political change. Rather, feminists must work simultaneously on the two levels of the personal and the political, because they are co-created and intertwined and mutually reinforcing in articulating the relationship of the personal and the political. Feminists challenge cultural stereotyping that identify the personal to women and left the political to men. As feminist theology grew, 
Experiences of race began to break the surface for the African American, Asian, Black, and Indigenous women globally, who began to question, challenge, and critique feminist theology's limited view of women's diverse experience, arguing that this white Western feminist theology could feminist theology could not speak for them. Sharon Welsh reminds us that as white women in Western society, we are not only oppressed, but we are also the oppressors, when we understand our colonial history. In the 70s, new strands of theology began to evolve. Womanist theology, Han, which was one of Asian women's theology from Korea, New Harista theology. These new liberation groups for women broke free and created, and created theologies that would identify their marginalized experience. Rosemary Radford Ruther, Beverly Wilder and Harrison, Carter Haywood, Valerie Saving, Judith Plasco, and Mary Daly. This list is not exhaustive. These were the early mothers and revolutionaries in recognizing the in-depth com complexities of the diverse experience of women and how this impacted on multiple levels with one thing in common, which was patriarchy. As a feminist liberation theologian, I see this methodology as an important vehicle that can transform women's lives today. Whilst violence and inequality for women on multiple levels exist, none of us as women will be free or valued in our full humanity. My area is feminist theologies and art, which I have found when intermingled give a much broader, deeper, empowered, embodied space for women to speak from. Christian feminist art and feminist art have been around for a while on the fringes of classical art. Feminist art was revolutionized in the 70s, which is when the first feminist art journal was published. Their first edition included an essay by Pat Menardi called A, Feminist, a Feminine Sensibility. This message crystallized the idea behind the need for this publication. It said, so now the art world is asking itself if there is a feminine sensibility in art. No one ever asked if there is a ma masculine sensibility in art for the very simple reason men have appropriated all of art to themselves. Feminist artist Judy Chicago is one female artist who tells of her struggle within the academic masculine arena of the art world. Her experience prompted her to open a teaching space for young female artists to share another way of expressing and defining their experience as women through their art. It took a while for these young women to speak and when they finally did, after much prompting by Chicago, one young woman, woman quietly said, nobody has ever asked us how we feel or what we think. The creative results were both disturbing and exciting. Chicago commented on how the unleashing of this creative energy of these young women frightened her so much she had to ask for the support of a female colleague. The Fresno Project in downtown Los Angeles has become a permanent project space for female arts. This is undoubtedly an example of women flourishing outside of the institution of art. Chicago has created many pieces of art, both on canvas and through huge installations. For example, the dinner party, which brings to our attention the remembering of a whole host of women throughout time who have been lost through the telling of his story. Chicago brings these women to the table, literally, to create her story. Female imagery and symbols of the vulva decorate the plates, and the table itself is the shape of a triangle, speaking for itself because of its significant form. This is one of her many contributions to the art world, which have helped to actualize the presence of women in the human story. Reclaiming women's legacy in this way is about reclaiming power over her own embodied experience in the world. In 1975, feminist artist Edwina Sandys created the Bronze Christa. She was exhibited in the Brooklyn Museum in New York. 
It was designed for the United Nations Decade for Women and at that time transgressed the boundaries of the white Western male Christ. In fact, it troubled the waters of patriarchal thought in 1984 when placed in a church in Manhattan, New York. The Maundy service at the, the Episcopal Cathedral of St. John the Divine in Manhattan included what they were seen as what was seen as familiar symbols of a progressive liturgy, such as a dramatic reading and a symbolic dance. But when a four-foot bronze statue of Jesus on the cross was unveiled, gasps could be heard throughout the main chapel. The Christus was in fact a Christa, complete with undraped breasts and rounded hips. Sandy was not alone in creating what are thought of as subversive, disturbing images of Christa. The Bosnian Christa, stitched by Margaret Argyle, was created in the context of religious meditation as a personal Lenten reflection on the plight of Muslim women who were raped and forcefully, forcefully impregnated in the former Yugoslavia 1993. It too caused a stir in theological circles as it represented a female figure on the cross situated with an evolver signifying the sexual oppression and pain of women in their bodies. I have a particular interest in Frida Kahlo, the Mexican painter, who painted from the heart of her experience, both internally and externally. Her art started from a place of confinement and pain, which was the result of an accident she had had as a young woman. She taught herself to paint within the confines of her bed. Her paintings expressed the ecological socio-political and is always personal, which can be seen in detail interwoven within her work. This is the ground that I paint from, intentionally making art that speaks through a feminist and theological genre. We do not yet have words for all we know as women. This is where my art attempts to speak and to connect, to resonate with people in a way that words cannot always do, especially when we are moving towards concepts we do not yet understand. As these few examples demonstrate, feminism and art have been expressing the subjectivity of women for a few decades now in retaliation against the objectification of women within classical art and the male gaze. But what of queer art? What does this have to offer as a liberating genre? In Kittredge Cherry's book, Art That Dares, we see art that subverts the Christian status quo of gender and rules and roles. Art That Dares features 11 visionary artists who portray Jesus as gay and Christ as a woman. These images, she claims, are arising because the conventional Jesus is not an adequate model that can speak for LBGTQI Christians. These artists, however, have been criticised for being too Christian in their creative expression because they use Christian text and symbols within their art. So is queering Christ enough to disrupt the, the fixed binaries of male and female and to lift women out of their subjugated position under patriarchy through their creative expression and visual art? It is true that queer theory disrupts and subverts all that is considered sexually normal within all societies, cultures and traditions. It is described as an umbrella term gathering together diverse issues within a common struggle. A resistance against heterosexual knowing. Eve Kosofsky, Sedgwick, def define, definition of queer, takes us away from the shameful, perverse definition that has led to prejudice and queer bashing. Queer is a continuing moment, movement, motive, recurrent, eddying and turbulent. The word queer itself means a cross, it comes from the Indo-European twerku, which also yields the German queer, transverse. The immemorial, cur immemorial currents that queer represents are anti-separatist as it is anti-assimilationist. Paradoxically, paradoxically, it is relational and strange. Queer theory is now being used over a wide range of academic disciplines, including art, to, pri to provide an inclusive discourse for the sexually excluded. Queer theory meets at the edges of humanity with the excluded and the marginalised, 
that have spilt out over the edges of the containers of heteronormativity. When queer theory meets theology, those that are at the margin become I, not we, because the unfolding of their diversity has become autobiographical and is contextually broad. Therefore, a collective description does not fit neatly around the shape-shifting edges of their being and becoming. The application of queer theory to theology enables it to become a sexual theology with a difference. Queer theology is able to meet those that are at the margins who have been rendered invisible, invisible because of who they are sexually in their bodies with great <coughs> compassion because it has the capacity to openly embrace diversity. These diverse sexual bodies are being are drawing to a, drawn into a community of diversity and solidarity with a hope of being accepted for who they are and where they are. Queer theology does not want to draw what is being acknowledged in humanity at the edges to the centre to become and accepted as equal. Queer theology strives instead for differentiation and plurality. Queer theology is in this sense a call for biodiversity in theology that is life and love in all of that which ultimately transforms and renews all its praxis. Queer theory is, then, yet another tool in the subversion of patriarchal reality. From a feminist liberation theological perspective, finding, finding a voice through art can be a visionary experience, creating another space to speak out from, against the injustice of systems that bind us, both personally and politically a space to be able to say what we experience to what is happening within us in relation to the world around us. In language other than the written word, which has its roots in patriarchy, a language which extends vocabulary and unfolds both the artist and the observer. This then can become a relational act and is something we can actually physically experience so it is both somatic and educational, because the whole body is engaged and is asked to respond and learn through that process. Art created by women can open up the visionary space that many women have of their incarnational value, showing they do indeed inhabit a space of deep embodied spirituality, which is actively worth something. When I speak of an embodied spirituality, I mean to live ethically, in a justice-seeking way, to own how we feel, fully through the sensual body, which is both relational and interconnected. The language of women's experience is deeply located within them, and phallocentric language has not served women well to express themselves because of the male signifier within it. Feminist theology and art open the space within the word to allow the language of the fe feminine, jouissance, her, sex her sexuality, to speak, thus enabling an emergent possibility of creating another dimension to feminist liberation theologies, revealing more in-depth stories and a different way of speaking women's experience. Women reading about other women's experience in feminist theologies can be a catalyst for the body's deep embedded memory that have not yet been realised. Art or any creative expression can bring to light that rich source of inner knowledge that has been dormant and now awakens and rises to the subject's consciousness. The prophetic words of Lisa Risher would still echo in my ears about the flesh becoming word, or even many words, because of the incarnational capacity of the flesh to reveal its multiple diverse experience to the world. It was here that I made the theological connection with my own voice of experience through visual art. This became a language-making process which allows the female body, my body, and other women's bodies to collectively speak. Elizabeth Schuschler Fiorenza's four hermeneutic principles have helped su to support the analysis of the position of women within theological narratives that have been written about them. Schischler Fiorenza uses four principles in her work to examine the text closely to see what is problematic for women 
Her first principle is a hermeneutic of suspicion, which she uses to examine the text for androcentric language that holds patriarchy in a place of authority throughout our theological history, which not only affects women, but also men, children, and the rest of creation. The second principle is a hermeneutic of proclamation, which finds space within the text that can suitably proclaim women's presence in an empowering way, both liturgically and ethically. The third principle is a hermeneutic of remembrance, which enables reconstruction of women's heritage within the text in order to value and empower. And the fourth principle is a hermeneutic of creative actualization that puts women literally back into the picture of theological history in a creative way by the use of imagination through various art forms, liturgy and ritual. These four principles can work through the creative practice of visual art, making this an important feminist theological connection. By opening the door to imagination, Shushla Fiorenza's latter principle of creative actualization offers a new way of speaking. This is one of the ways it, it offers a new way of speaking, the language of art. Here art can create the liturgical space that allows women's experience to speak in multiple ways. And in my experiences, in my experience, art has become my liturgy and prayer. Although theology and art are not unusual bedfellows, feminist liberation theologies and art are embryonic. The connection between theology and female artists is not yet fully recognized because his, historically, Theological, theology and theological art was predominantly made by men. The seeds for this research project were sown at, at the biannual European Society of Women in Theological Research in the 2009 conference. Organized, this was organized by its UK members here in Winchester. In conversation between Lisa, myself, and other women theologians and artists in a subgroup entitled Art, Theology, art and theology, which I led. We need to listen and hear women in the world of feminist art, Christian feminist art, and queer art, because I think our experience as women speaks a familiar language of entrapment that is rooted in the body. These bodies are crying out with stories not only of disenfranchisement, but also of celebration of their div diverse ways of being and becoming in the world. This language of art, this other way of speaking, highlights, highlights another way of seeing and doing that can impact and change the patriarchal rhetoric of fixed absolutes in theology. We are female artists, standing in a place of resistance against, the against this rhetoric. And they have these, uh, this art here has theistic qualities. They tell a story of our incarnation as women through our bodies. Welsh speaks, Welsh speaks about the spiritual dimension of feminist resistance. I would argue that this can be expressed through any creative medium. She makes reference to feminist poet Adrian Rich, who describes the feminist spirit, spirituality as casting one's lot with those who resist, of continuing to affirm life in the midst of systemic denials of life. She argues that Adrian Rich's evocation of resistance has theistic qualities, and it is shown through her poetry and can be seen in this excerpt. My heart is moved by all I cannot say. So much has been destroyed. I have to cast my lot with those who age after age, perversely, with no extraordinary power, reconstitute the world. This speaks to what we are endeavouring to achieve through the project, through this project, to contribute to that reconstitution as a community of women, creating a language that speaks boldly and fluidly of our experience. <coughs> and I hope to change the way things are through the language of our visionary vista. Adrian Rich holds that the feminist expression of hope, resistance and community among women a new language is being born. From an excerpt from her poem, Transcendental Attitude, she says, two women, eye to eye, 
measuring each other's spirit, each other's limitless desire. And in the last line, Adrian Rich says, a whole new poetry begins here. I would suggest, in relation to art, a whole new language begins here. So in conclusion, the aim of this project is to create an abundant embodied narrative that impact, impacts, relocates actively and engages both the artist and the observer. Because of its fluidity, feminist theologies are able to intermingle with other disciplines that also address fleshly experience in the world and interconnect with the social, political, cultural, environmental and et ecological issues. This widens the human scope for understanding the complexities of life and what it is to be human in all its fullness, giving us a clearer vision of who we can be. Women have struggled to find that place because of being pushed into confined spaces, but feminist theologies and art create that space to be heard and is a place of resistance and revolution against the system that has so tightly defined us. Art, then, is another way of creating feminist theology, theologies that cover women's diverse experience of embodiment and can help towards women's future flourishing. <laughs>